Ah, chocolate. It's said that nine out of 10 people love it, and the 10th person is lying. Chocolate's universal appeal dates back 2,000 years to the ancient Maya and Aztec civilizations. These cultures believed that cacao, the tropical plant that produces chocolate, was imbued with divine powers. Cacao seeds were used as currency and to improve health. And today, scientists agree, chocolate is actually good for you. The exciting news with our study is we found that small, Daily doses of dark chocolate can actually improve vascular function. Mary Angler has studied chocolate since 2001, when she was a professor at the University of California, San Francisco. Dark chocolate is within the one category of flavonoids called flavanols. Within that group are a number of compounds that have catechin or epicatechin. Catechin and epicatechin are naturally occurring compounds that increase the levels of nitric oxide in your bloodstream, causing your arteries to dilate. This allows your blood to flow more freely. We know that heart disease, you have narrowing of the arteries and blood flow can't get through. Blood flow is very important to help prevent any kind of cardiac event. But all chocolate is not created equal when it comes to benefiting your heart. Dark chocolate is much better because of the high content of the cocoflavanols. The flavanol content of dark chocolate is even higher than that of other flavanol-rich foods like cherries, red wine, and tea. It not only supports circulation, it also soothes frazzled nerves and lightens gloomy moods. You can raise your serotonin levels and that's why you get the good feeling after having dark chocolate. Chocolate may be especially helpful for pregnant women. A 2004 University of Helsinki study showed that women who eat it every day during pregnancy report calmer, happier six-month-old babies. It also reduces the risk of preeclampsia, a dangerous pregnancy complication. But perfecting the taste of chocolate is trickier than you might expect. So that's what the final chocolate looks like. Meet Timothy nice. Childs, one of the founders of Cho, a pioneering artisanal chocolate maker based in Berkeley, California. Chocolate's an incredibly complex system. It goes beyond just hard science. You also have to integrate art and a lot of intuition, too, at the same time. So it's a really interesting combo. Any fine chocolate begins with the cacao tree. A mature tree produces about 20 fruits or pods, each containing about 40 beans. An average tree produces about two pounds of chocolate per year. After the beans are extracted from the pods, they need to be fermented. Fermentation halts the seed's growth and develops the cacao's complex flavors. The traditional style of fermentation is in big piles, and that doesn't have proper kind of even cooking of the beans, and so we try to encourage our farmers to go to a more of a box method. After fermenting, the beans need to be dried. Traditionally, growers dried their beans on concrete, but Cho found a better solution. When the beans are drying, they're outgassing what we call volatiles, which are pretty much acidic acids and other undesirable flavors. But if you're outgassing um, on plastic or concrete, it bounces right back into the bean. So if you actually dry on bamboo racks and stuff, or anything that's got air moving underneath it, those acidic acids combine with the oxygen and blow away. To maintain quality control, Childs created an innovative device to connect with his growers in Peru. We pretty much took an off-the-shelf weather system and did some custom modifications to it. This weather system sends weather data wirelessly to a laptop, and that laptop's hooked up to a cellular modem that sends it up to the internet. Cho employees use this data to track how the weather affects each batch of beans. Then, when the company receives a superior batch, there's no mystery about the conditions that produced it. Cho also created a series of flavor test labs in order to produce tiny batches of factory-grade chocolate right where the cacao is grown. The labs allow farmers to taste their own product and to bring entire harvests up to a shared standard for taste and texture. Look at the difference in the texture. See how it's got really good def definition? This tastes good, this does not taste good. Here in the company's original flavor lab, the raw beans are first roasted in a modified turkey oven. The beans are then cracked open and another homemade contraption is used to separate the nibs or the meat of the bean from the shell. 
Next, the nibs are ground with a repurposed Indian curry doll maker. The refining stage determines the chocolate's texture and creates the smooth mouthfeel that aficionados savor. Then the chocolate is conched or heated and cooled repeatedly to fine tune its most subtle flavors. For childs, the real magic happens during the tempering stage. You have tempered chocolate just like making tempered glass or tempered steel. You start with a molten fluid, you seed it with a piece of already crystallized material. You're actually creating this molten lattice crystal structure that's flowing. And then if you mold it and you cool it just right, what ends up happening is all these little fat molecules kind of line up and then they get tighter and tighter and tighter until it goes and it fuses in this crystal. And that's what gives chocolate its snap. For the 6.5 million farmers who grow cacao, the crop is as precarious as it is precious. Every year, nearly a third of the cacao crop in Africa is lost to pests, drought, and disease. Losses to farmers around the globe amount to $800 million each year. In 2010, the genome of the most popular variety, Theobroma cacao, was sequenced by scientists working with the USDA, IBM, and Mars Chocolate. To decipher the cacao DNA, scientists first crushed the leaves and pods, then extracted the nucleotides that make up the plant's genes using a DNA sequencer. With free online access to the sequenced cacao genome, farmers should be able to identify the tastiest and most productive plants to breed. This could help ensure the sustainability of cacao farms worldwide, with crops that can withstand assaults from disease and a changing climate. And that's sweet news for the future of one of the world's favorite treats.